This video looks at the process of the variation of the metric determinant, but before doing that we will derive some useful expressions that will aid in the process of variation. So we'll start now with the square n by n matrix, and we'll call that A. Whatever size that is, 2 by 2, 3 by 3, whatever size you want. And then what we want to do is exponentiate the matrix, uh, as you can see in this process here. Now this looks like the Taylor series expansion because it is. As it would be for, say, e to the power of x, we would have 1 plus x plus 1 on 2 factorial times x squared plus 1 on 3 factorial times x cubed and so on. So that the process of the Taylor expansion of e to the power a, where here a is our square n by n matrix, e to the a, is just this process here. Now all of this sum will just produce another matrix. So summing it like this, there you go, there's a general expression for the summation of this expansion above, will be some new matrix B, whatever that is. Uh, here of course is I is the identity matrix, or the unit matrix. And so our first relationship would be that E to the exponent A is equal to B, where A is an n by n matrix, and clearly B will also be an n by n matrix. So as an example, if we have a, if the matrix A is diagonalized, is a diagonal matrix, or can be diagonalized, such as this expression here, whatever order, then E to the A is just this. It's the exponent of each of the elements on the diagonal. Next, matrix logarithm. If we can exponentiate, why not take the logarithm? So again, if, we, if A is a diagonal matrix, or can be diagonalized, which has not been gone through in this video, but can be looked up, obviously. Uh, so the matrix of this form here, whatever order it is, then the log of it will just be the log of each of these diagonal terms, or the natural log of each of these diagonal elements. Matrix determinants and trace. There's a relationship between the matrix determinant and the trace, and uh, that's what we're going to have a look at. So we'll just uh, keep things small and simple at the moment, but if we start with a small 2 by 2 matrix, A, A0 and A1 in the diagonal, along the diagonal, and the trace of A is just the sum of the diagonal elements. Exponentiating that, we get the exponential trace A is this expression here, e to the power of all of that. Uh, the determinant of e to the power of A, well, as we saw on the previous page, e to the power of A is just the exponential of that, and the exponential of that, and zero everywhere else. Well, the determinant of that, for a diagonal matrix is just the elements in, along the diagonal line there multiplied together. So we get e to the a0 times e to the a1, which is the same as e to the power of a0 plus a1. And so that gives our first expression that the determinant of e to the a, matrix a, is e to the power of the trace of a. So a second relationship here it is. Nice big bold. Determinant e to the a is e to the trace of a. And we'll use that later on. All right, from that, e to the a is equal to b. Well, we can take the natural log of both sides, and we end up with the original matrix a is the log of the matrix b. Okay, now, from our second relationship on the previous page there, the determinant of e to the a is e to the trace a, then the determinant of b, replacing e to the a with b, is e to the trace of log b here. Remember, a is log b, so in this part here, replace the a with log, natural log of b. Then take the log of both sides, natural log, log determinant b is log of e to the trace of log b, log and uh, e, exponential uh, exponentiation with e, those two inverses of each other, each other, sorry. The natural log of det b is the trace of then of log b, and this is our next result. This will be very useful to us in varying the metric later on in this video. All right, let's take the differential of both sides. So restating the expression again, the log of natural log of the determinant of b is the trace of the log of b. 
varying that, just as with the normal uh, expression, the derivative on the original. So delta of determinant b on determinant b is the trace of, again, the derivative b, delta b, over b, which is just b inverse. So we get the trace of b inverse times delta b. Now, the aim of this video is to look at the variation of the metric. So this expression here will help us to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to relate this to the matrix G alpha beta, subscript alpha beta. Let B equals G alpha beta. Uh, B inverse will be the inverse metric, so that will be G alpha beta uh, contravariant, in the contravariant place, with the upper indices. And determinant B will just be the letter G. So, delta B on B will be delta G on G. This bit here will be um, the inverse times the variation in B. Well, B is a subject here, so that's the variation there, delta there. And the inverse G alpha beta contravariant is over here. Multiplied by size by G, we have delta G is G, the determinant, times the inverse metric, G alpha beta, times delta for the variant uh, G alpha beta, for the variation in the... Um, matrix G alpha beta for the metric. From which we get, if we want the variation of the square root of the metric, bear in mind that the metric is negative in relativity. Um, multiplying along the diagonal line, you'll end up with negative results. We'll put the minus sign here so that we can take the square root of the metric afterwards, given that G is negative. When we vary that, well, differentiating it, we get 1 over 2 square root minus g times delta of negative g. Well, the minus comes out, ends up in the front here, and we get delta g. We've seen on the previous page what delta g is. It was just the subject here. That was the result we found on the previous page. All right. If we now absorb this minus sign over here to minus g, making this now a positive quantity, we can then take the square root of it and square it. That will cancel out this term down the bottom here, and we end up with delta of the square root of minus g, or the determinant, the square root of the negative of the determinant, is a half times the square root of the negative of the, of the determinant, times this part here. Um, an important result, and we're going to build on that slightly to get a, a variation in the metric that's useful in general relativity. Okay, now, the metric and its inverse multiplied together give us the identity element, which is just this Kronecker delta here. It gives us the unit, met, uh, unit matrix, or the identity matrix. If we now vary that, well, this right-hand side here will go to zero. And this left-hand side here, the, the product rule, or Leibniz rule, is applied. Delta G alpha times its inverse is the metric times the variation of the inverse metric. It's all equal to zero, so if we take this bit to the right-hand side, it makes that negative. That then gives us delta G is minus G times G alpha beta delta G inverse this, uh, of the, the variation of the inverse metric. So it gives us this second relationship here. Remember on the previous page, we had the... Um, the variation of the metric G in terms of this part here, and so it was plus, but when we do it in terms of this part here, we replace that bit with this negative part over here, and that's why we get the minus sign. If you flip back to the previous page, you'll see that. Next bit, we want to find the variation of the metric in terms of its inverse. We want to ultimately get to this line here. Okay, well let's start with what we know. So the variation of the square root of the metric is a half times this. We've already derived this bit here. Okay, and now what we're going to do is replace this bit here with this bit we've just found on the previous page, that bit there. Okay, and when we do that, the minus sign here will come out to the front, and so we end up with this expression here. So the, the variation in the square root of the negative of the determinant is minus this time a half times the square root of the negative of the metric.
metric, uh, negative for the determinant, sorry, times this expression here. All right. And this result is useful in the variation approach to general relativity. And so that gives us our final result, highlighted in bold here, is this object. Notice the minus it in front, and the variant of the inverse metric.